Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us um, for our first episode of Hands on Tidy B. Um, I'm going to give everyone a couple more minutes to join since it's just now 10 o'clock. Um, but just a few housekeeping items while we wait for people to join. Um, for the agenda, we are going to have Ed, uh, the CTO, Pink Hat, speak for about 30 minutes. If you guys have any questions, feel free to type in your questions. Um, and we can see all those questions and we will answer them at the end. Uh, you can also raise your hand if you would like to speak and we can unmute you to speak and ask questions at the end. Um, but we will be doing the questions after the 30 minute presentation. Um, so we're gonna probably get started in about, like give everyone one more minute to join. Yep. And um, then I'll pass it over to Ed once. I want to wait one more minute. Okay, um, so uh, Samantha, we are, we are recording, right? Correct. Yeah, okay. Perfect. <laughs> okay, um, well, let's get started. <clears throat> Hello everyone, uh, good morning and good evening. Um, it is really glad to be here. Um, this is the first official webinar of TIDB. And I think today is the first episode of the series. Um, in this series, I'm going to share things about what is TIDB, how TIDB can help you, how to deploy TIDB. Uh, what's the tools around TIDB and how to use them, etc. So it is not a deep dive talk, so I'm not going to introduce the source code or how we build it. So it means this series would be more practical. Um, you don't have to be a database expert or distributed system guru to understand the talk, uh, but I will assume that uh, our audience have the basic skill of operating uh, Linux, uh, cell script, command line, and some basic concept about database, like what is MySQL, what is HBase, Cassandra, etc. cetera. Um, since today is our first lesson, I think it's a great time to give a overview introduction of uh, TidyB. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, first thing, uh, introduction, uh, my name is Ed. Uh, I'm also the co-founder and CTO of PinCap. Uh, PinCap is the company behind TidyB. And uh, before creating PinCap, I worked as a distributed system engineer for about 10 years. Um, so four years ago, I quit my previous job and began TidyB project from ground up. Uh, this is my email and uh, Twitter. Just feel free to contact me if you have any following questions. Um, before we started, uh, we I want to share some a little bit history about uh, about the history of TidyB. Uh, I think it was it was five years ago. Uh, I was working for the fast growing internet company in China uh, as an infra engineer. Uh, back in that time, we 
we're using a lot of MySQL in production. And also we use MySQL sharding a lot. Uh, at that time, I think every three months we have to reshard our database cluster because just because the data grows. Um, and I think it is really painful uh, for both application engineer and us. So to tackle this problem, uh, my team was working on the project. We plan to create the MySQL sharding middleware. Uh, and the target was making the reshard and the scale out process transparent to the application layer. Uh, but it is really hard, right? Because the nature of database middleware, uh, application developer always have to specify the sharding key everywhere, uh, cannot do the cross shard transaction, or even, you know, running some simple cross shard join group by is impossible. And we also found that it is near impossible for the database middleware to achieve these features. So um, in the end, we decided to create a new database from scratch. I think it was uh, late uh, 2014. I, uh, we read a paper about Google Spanner and the F1 and decided to build an open source implementation. Uh, this is the beginning of TiDB project. So um, basically, uh, if you are in these situations, like us five years ago, uh, for example, you have a huge MySQL instance or Aurora instance, but just don't know, just don't want to shard, uh, or you, you want to do some analytical query on the sharded MySQL cluster, but just don't know how to do that, or and you don't want to set up the whole branch of OLAP system just for some simple, simple query, um, or you, you are evaluating some NoSQL systems like HBase, Cassandra, uh, but application really needs something like SQL, SCD transaction, or secondary index. Uh, in this situation, you may try TiDB. Uh, maybe TiDB could help. And um, this is the design goal of TiDB project. Um, first thing is scalability, and the scale out uh, the, the target is the scale out process should be entirely transparent to the application. Uh, developers don't have to, you know, specify the sharding key, uh, don't have to rebalance or reshard manually. Uh, when you want to scale out, uh, just add a new node to the cluster and you are all set. Uh, the second is uh, HA. Uh, I think nowadays, the L2 failure is become more and more important for modern application architecture. Um, the distributed database should support the self-healing. Um, but I think the good news is with the help of some modern distributed consensus algorithms like multi source, like Raft, I think it is possible to do that. So we are not going to use the traditional master-slave model to, uh, to do that. We have a better solution now. The third thing is ACID compliance, uh, transaction support. <clears throat> From the application perspective, um, many things would be become very simple if the underlying database provides cross-road transaction primitives, especially for some something like uh, financial applications, uh, something like core banking systems, e-commerce, etc. And I admit that uh, the transaction support may will bring some extra latency. But in our experience, I think it is not a big deal because you can always increase the concurrency rate to achieve a better throughput with a stable latency. And on the other hand, you can always use some cache systems like Redis, like Memcached, something like that to reduce the, the latency. So I prefer the database should be the source of choose. And uh, least but not, uh, last but not least is um, ease of use. I mean, in our case, uh, the database, the query interface should be compatible with MySQL. Uh, we choose MySQL because MySQL have a, you know, a very huge community. Uh, and in most cases, you don't have to change single line of code to migrate from existing MySQL to TiDB. And, uh, and on the other hand, 
because of the MySQL compatibility of, my, of TiDB, and it should be also support some useful tools from existing MySQL community. Uh, for example, if you are a MySQL DBA, you can still use your toys, and that would be great. Okay, that is the, the goals, and uh, let's take a look at how we make it possible. Um, basically, basically TiDB uses SQL above NoSQL architecture, uh, a stately SQL layer on top of a distributed key value layer. Uh, in our case, the stately SQL layer is, uh, is TiDB server. Uh, you can launch as many TiDB server as you want to handle the connections. Every TiDB server exposes a MySQL wire protocol endpoint to, to the application. You can use any MySQL client uh, you want, like JDBC, ODBC, MySQL client, uh, uh, or any ORMs that supports MySQL uh, to connect to, to TiDB. And this is a closer view of the, the whole system. You may notice that we have a new components called the PD, the placement driver. And it is, I want to say it is the data metadata storage for the whole system. And it is also in charge of data rebalancing. I will introduce these components like TiDB, TiKV, and PD uh, one by one in next few slides. Um, first, for the database, one of the most important thing is storage. Um, in our case, uh, TiKV is in charge of this. Uh, this is the, the diagram of the, the overview architecture of TiKV. According to the name, uh, TiKV, the KV stands for the key value database. So uh, it is a distributed transactional key value database. And, and it uses a shared nothing architecture, so it can be scaled out transparently. And uh, the data locality information is stored in the PD cluster. Uh, TiDB client will also buffer the router info, so the client can locate the key value pair uh, in corresponding TiKV node. And also, uh, the TiKV is a CNCF project. Um, CNCF, CNCF is uh, a popular cloud native computing uh, computing foundation, um, so it is a cloud native. And inside TiDB, inside TiKV, uh, the the data is stored as key value pairs. Uh, when we are talking about TiKV, that means uh, the cluster composed by many TiKV server and the PD server. And locally, in every TiKV server node, the data is stored in RocksDB. Um, by the way, RocksDB is a local embedded key value library, uh, local, uh, which is open sourced by Facebook. Uh, and it is super popular. It is also the building block of many modern distributed databases like CockroachDB, Yookbytes, and of course, TiDB. And the TiKV supports two kinds of API. Uh, one is transactional API. Like, uh, for example, you can call the, the, the begin begin API, and you, you will get the transaction object, uh, insert, update, key value pairs, do some mutations, and you call the commit, uh, either all the mutations successfully executed or, or failed. Another API is uh, raw key value API, and this API is only guaranteed the atomic uh, operation on one key value pair, like get, put, delete. Uh, the, the semantic is a little bit like HBase. And um, by the way, raw API always has, has, has a better performance than the transactional API, but uh, sometimes transactional API is more useful because when you need transaction, right? Um, and the, the whole TiDB project use a highly layered architecture. Um, for example, you can use TiKV standalone. 
you, you can use TIDB, uh, TIKV along without TIDB uh, as a super fast transactional key value database. And I'm also happy to see that the community have built some interesting project using TIKV as the building block, like TAT and from A2. It is a Redis compatible layer on top of TIKV and things like that, super cool. And uh, uh, by the way, uh, the, the whole TIKV project is written uh, in Rust programming language, uh, so it's super fast. Mm. And inside TIKV, uh, logically, the data uh, is organized in regions uh, inside TIKV. Uh, region is uh, a branch of key value pairs. You can consider it as a range or split. And the region is the minimal unit of data movement. Uh, by default, the, the size of region is about 96 megabytes. Um, and once the size within the region exceeds 96 megabyte, uh, the region will be split into two smaller regions. So that's how we do the, the scale out split and the, the move. Uh, and the, the, the region is the minimal uh, unit of data movement. And inside Thai KV, uh, the key value pairs is ordered uh, in the, the, the alphabet, al alphabet order. So uh, it means TIKV is a globally ordered map and the key space is split into, you know, countless <coughs> ordered regions across different TIKV nodes. And every region has, by default, uh, three replicas. And the data is replicated by Raft protocol. Uh, so uh, that's why we call ourselves multi-Raft architecture. And this is um, and this is the, the, the diagram uh, shows within the Taike we know uh, all the regions shares the same rocks DB uh, and the region is uh, continue continuous key value pairs region one two three four yeah just like this and this diagram means every region is uh, is a raft group. Um, and notice that the raft group is always have a leader replica, uh, like the, the, the red text here, uh, the leader replica. All the workload will go, go, go to the, the leader replica. So uh, that means, uh, and that's, that's another reason why we choose 96 megabyte as the default region size. It is really small and good for the the, the, the workload, the rebalancing, the load balancing. So in this case, uh, all the uh, key value operations of region in, inside region one will go through the, the node one and uh, the region two, uh, the, the operations in region two will go through the, the, the this node. So yeah, so, so it is really good for the load balancing. And the, the PD, the PD cluster, just I mentioned, will guarantee the regions are, you know, evenly distributed across the, the different node. Uh, also for the load balancing capacity balancing, I will talk about it later. Uh, the next important component is TIDB server, the, the SQL layer. Uh, it shares the same name with the whole project, TIDB, so it's really important. Uh, for TIDB, uh, it is, um, and we put a lot of effort to make our SQL layer uh, very powerful. And the first thing about uh, TIDB is it is stateless, like I mentioned. Uh, client can connect to any alive TIDB server instance and uh, TIDB server exposed the uh, MySQL wire protocol endpoint for client to connect. And it will, it will also do the sync parsing, the gen, uh, generate the, the logical plan, go through our cost-based optimizer, uh, generate the physical plan, and the physical plan executor will send the key value operation uh, to, to the TIKV, corresponding TIKV node. 
Um, and of course, um, and notice that we, we build a whole uh, we build a whole SQL layer from scratch. We are not using any code from from MySQL. Uh, that means TiDB is not 100% compatible with 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 with, with MySQL. Uh, something like store procedure, trigger, uh, foreign key, we choose not to support. And uh, by the way, we have a list of unsupported syntax. Uh, anything outside the list, it is a comp uh, compatibility issue. Uh, you can tell us, we can, we will fix it. But uh, also, we borrow a lot of uh, test cases from MySQL source code, MySQL community, and the different kinds of OIM frameworks to make sure we have a good compatibility with MySQL. So in most cases, you don't have to worry about uh, this. And of course, we, we support secondary index and uh, most of the, the daily DM, daily used DMLs. And, uh, and another important thing is we support non-blocking DDL. So uh, non-blocking DDL is kind of like the building features, building feature in, inside PyDB. And uh, because sometimes you will have a super large table like 10 billion rows in the single table, if you, uh, doing the blocking DDL in the super large table, uh, that will not good, right? And uh, like I mentioned, uh, the Thai KV is a key value database. So the, it is TiDB server's job to translate the relational model to the, to the key value pairs. And uh, this is the rules, uh, including the, the data bro and the and the secondary index. Uh, we will encode, encode all the data from each column uh, within one row uh, into, the, uh, uh, into the key value pairs, uh, the value part. So that means TiDB is a row-based row -based database. It is not column-based. Column so it's not very friendly uh, to support the super wide uh, table in TiDB. So, uh, most of, tidy, uh, of our TiDB user is uh, some hybrid uh, workload, like uh, it is an OLTP database, but I want to do some ad hoc query, uh, but not the uh, super wide uh, table. Uh, yeah, you cannot use TiDB as the machine learning database. And uh, the, the next uh, one, the next one is PD. Uh, I think I have already mentioned it several times. Uh, the main purpose of PD is store the metadata for every type that we know. And uh, also the, the PD stores this uh, locality data, the metadata into the embedded ETCD. ETCD is, uh, you know, a uh, high availability key value store uh, we use the embedded uh, ETCD inside TIKV, uh, inside PD. And also, um, and yeah, it also uh, support the timestamp. Uh, it is also the, the timestamp allocator for the transaction layer. Uh, it also the, it will uh, do the replica scheduling. Uh, the PD itself is also the uh, raft group, so it is high. Uh, it supports high availability, so you don't have to uh, worry. Uh, you don't. You don't have to worry about what if the type, the, the PD nodes die. Uh, it will, you know, do the do the flyover uh, by using raft. And um, the Thai KV, uh, just like I mentioned, the Thai KV nodes will. Uh, periodically send the heartbeat to PD server and with some information like uh, how many regions in this type KV and the star key and the end keys of this region, uh, the load of this node, the TPS, the QPS information of the, each region, uh, things like this. The PD server will gather all this information from each, uh, every nodes and generate the big picture and analyze it 
and piggyback the, the, the scheduling commands, like add a new replica in this node, uh, remove replicas uh, on your local disk, uh, transfer your transfer your 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 leadership raft leadership to another node, uh, something like that. And also, um, developers can write their own scheduling logic and ingest to into PD for some customized scheduling. Uh, for example, hey, I want to put uh, 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 this table in in the uh, North American data center, and I want to put this table or this database uh, in, in in China uh, data center, uh, something like that. You can uh, write your own scheduling strat strategies. And uh, the last thing before the demo, I want to do the quick introduction to to the tool sets around TDB. Um, something like uh, Lightning, and it is a fast offline uh, data importing tool used to migrate the data from from MySQL to uh, to TiDB, and also the the TiDB DM. It is uh, it is also the data migration tool from uh, from MySQL to TiDB, but it is used for the online data migration. It uh, it will it will make TiDB as an uh, active slave of a MySQL master. So you can hook up, hook up as the uh, uh, MySQL slave and synchronize the data in real time. Uh, it is really cool. And it, it also will merge all the, if you have a sharded MySQL, it will merge all the sharded table into one large table in, inside TiDB. So it is a super cool, uh, it is super cool. Uh, you can still use your MySQL and uh, using uh, TiDB as the analytical database. Uh, and of course, the TiDB bin log, uh, we, uh, and the TiDB bin log will catch the change data and send to the uh, third party systems like Kafka. Uh, it is a typical cap change data capture streaming tool. Um, and don't worry, uh, I will introduce them one by one in the in the future uh, webinars. So uh, stay tuned. And uh, for the deployment, uh, of course, TiDB comes with many out to deployment methods like uh, local deployment. You can use uh, you can use Docker Compose. Uh, I want to do the do the demo today using Docker Compose to. Uh, create the cluster uh, on my on my laptop uh, to see the the components I introduced today. And if you are using AWS, GCP, the public cloud, uh, I will encourage you to use the the Terraform. We also provide the Terraform script and the Ansible for the one click deployment. Uh, and of course, we we support deploy the TiDB cluster uh, in bare metal. Um, it is uh, environment agnostic, agnostic. Uh, so many of our users uh, in China, uh, they are using their own uh, data center. Um, so yeah, uh, if you have uh, your own data center, it's okay. And uh, of course, we, um, we also provide the operator for the Kubernetes deployment. So of course you can use the the operator in also you can use the operator in public cloud like EKS like GKE uh, Google Kubernetes engine and the operator uh, TDB operator is also open source and in the in the future we will encourage uh, more encourage users to use the Kubernetes uh, deployment uh, because it the you know maintaining a large scale distributed system is uh, a little bit painful even uh, even though we provide some tools like Terraform Ansible uh, it is still very painful so uh, in the in the in the future the load map will put more effort in the in the Kubernetes deployment uh, cloud native right okay uh, demo time um. Today I'm going to do the uh, because this is the first demo. Uh, I 
I want to launch a TiDB cluster uh, in my on my on my laptop using using Docker Compose uh, with three type type KV nodes. Uh, and I will uh, introduce the uh, you can see the uh, components like PD, like type KV, like uh, TiDB. Uh, they they are running in the in the Docker environment. And the second thing is that I want to launch uh, WordPress, WordPress the blog uh, inside this cluster and using the, the, the TiDB we just uh, launched as the underlying storage. And you can see the WordPress cons uh, consider the underlying storage is a MySQL, but it is a TiDB. And the, the third thing I want to scale out uh, without change single line of code from the, the WordPress. So uh, at the beginning, we have three tech every nodes, and uh, uh, I want to scale out to four nodes seamlessly. Uh, OK, let's begin. OK, um, well, uh, TiDB supports the, uh, we, we, are, we provided the official Docker Compose script in this repo. TiDB Docker Compose uh, is very easy to use. First thing, uh, git clone. And you can see the uh, default uh, setup of the, the, the Docker Compose is we will launch PD1, uh, PD0, PD1, PD2, uh, three PD nodes, and uh, three TIKV nodes, TIDB0, one, two, and the one and the point, uh, TIDB, and the point and expose the 4,000. 4,000 is the default part of, of TIDB, the MySQL endpoint. And this is the uh, setup. And uh, this, this Docker Compose also come with some TySpark uh, thing. So I will, I will introduce all these uh, components uh, in in the future webinars. So today you don't have to uh, worry about this. You don't have to do any extra modification. Uh, when you uh, get, get clone the dog compose uh, repo, you can just run docker compose up. Let's go. Yeah, it's creating the, the, the uh, the containers, like uh, we can see the PD, type KV, three nodes, uh, compose a uh, three nodes cluster, and the uh, TIDB all set. And by the way, uh, we are, by default, we are using Grafana and the Prometheus for the, uh, for the metrics, for the dashboard. Uh, once you, you, you have launched a TIDB cluster, you can uh, go to the Grafana dashboard to see the, yeah, this is tidy. We have uh, about, I think about near thousands of metrics here, uh, but we, uh, we also put some very important metrics in the overview panel. Okay, um, since the cluster is started, uh, we can use the MySQL client to connect to it. You can see uh, this is TiDB, but we are, we are still using the MySQL client to connect to the, to the, to the, to the cluster. Uh, yeah. Very like uh, similar to to the MySQL. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, it also provide a very tiny visualization. Uh, a small tool showing the UI of how the data. Yeah. As you can, uh, as you can see, it is a uh, uh, very useful tool to show the topology. Right now, we have three nodes, and notice that the, the there's some small block here, right? The green, the gray one. That means the the data region, uh, like I mentioned, the region. Right now, the 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 data is uh, there. Are not much data in the in this cluster because we just created a new one. And we are going to set up a WordPress. Um, we also, I also want to use the, the, the Docker, uh, Docker Compose to, to deploy a WordPress. Docker Compose. Um, You can see um, we we are using the official uh, WordPress uh, image, and uh, we specify the DB host to to the TiDB and the port is four thousand. Uh, okay, let's see. Okay, creating the the WordPress. In this cluster, you see what happened. Yes, uh, this is the install install page of WordPress. Click. Hello. Very weak password. Never mind. Okay, and the backend storage is 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 tidyv now. Okay, you can see the, the it is the, the the main page of 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 the WordPress, and it works like a charm. You can leave any message here, and you can we can we can check out what is going on inside TiDB. Uh, yeah, this uh, you can you can you can find this is the the tables from the WordPress. Really amazing. And I do want to leave time for some questions that we have, and anyone who has any more. So, um, do you want like one more minute to wrap this up, Ed, the demo? Uh, yeah, I have an, okay. uh, the final step of the demo. Um, and you can see right now it's a three. The, 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 the last thing is I, uh, I, I want to show how to scale out uh, from three nodes to, to four nodes. Um, Yeah, like I said, right now we have three Thai KV nodes. And what if, what if we want to do some really quick uh, scale out? You don't have to, you know, stop the cluster. You just need to have to uh, need to add a new instance, uh, add a, a launch a new. Uh, Tag V server, and you're all set. Let's try it.
And what I'm doing is uh, I created another uh, Docker uh, Docker container uh, running the new Tech Every Nodes. And we can see, yeah, after a few seconds, yeah, right now we have one, two, three, four, four nodes. And this, uh, this tiny lines means the data transfer, uh, the data movement uh, between different different nodes for the for the for the balancing. Um, and you can, as you can see, um, right now the the new store doesn't have any data. Uh, we have a threshold is about one minutes or two minutes, and the PD will notice notice that uh, this this node is almost empty, and will it will uh, try to move some. Uh, data for the for the for the balancing. Uh, at the meantime, we can still uh, use the the existing cluster without uh, any we don't have to you know worry about the scheduling uh, the data rebalancing publish okay. yes. And we can um, see some the you can see some of the, 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 the operation durations, uh, QPS, TPS, QPS by instance, uh, by the by the by the Grafana dashboard. And you can see uh, right now we have uh, I my laptop is one terabyte SSD. Uh, right now we have four high uh instance so uh, it is a four terabytes cluster yeah and right now we only have 200 megabytes for some metadata and things like this um, okay um well this is uh, this is my demo. Um, and any questions? We do have one question that someone wrote in asking about uh, what is the timestamp allocator? Oh. Uh, this is the our transaction model is a uh, uh, two phrase commit model uh, using a two phrase commit algorithm. And the algorithm itself relies on every transaction. ID is a timestamp. Uh, so that means uh, when we create a new transaction, uh, the, uh, the, the, the TIDB client will ask the PD to get the transaction ID. Uh, the transaction ID is a timestamp. So uh, the, it is, uh, that, that is what I mean about timestamp allocator. Yeah. Another question. Can you demo how to set up the local dev environment for TidyB? Actually, I I think uh, you can consider TidyB as uh, in in local. You can consider TidyB as a dropping replacement for 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 the for the MySQL. So all you uh, for for the local development environment, uh, you can just just like uh, what I do launch a Docker Compose cluster, and uh, you can uh, you can set up uh, you can you can consider uh, it is a, uh, it is a MySQL, and uh, your application can uh, you know connect it to your local uh, TiDB in uh, in Docker uh, to test the uh, test the compatibility thing, or or what you mean. Uh, on the other hand, if you 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 mean you want to do the as the TiDB developer want to change some code of of TiDB, uh, you can uh, follow the, the the instruction in TiDB repo uh, here how to contribute. Uh, basically, TiDB the whole TiDB project 
uh, the TIDB part is written written in Go, um, and yeah, basically the the uh, TIDB development environment is uh, pretty much the same as the, some normal Go uh, project. So, yeah. And then we have one person who wants to speak. Kevin, I'm going to unmute you so you can ask your question. Go ahead, Kevin. Hi, Ed. Uh, thank you for the presentation and the demo. Uh, I have a two-part question. Just uh, for the first part, so I think in your demo, the last step, you just added one more Thai KV node. And now yeah. on this like little visualization thing, I see some kind of data movement to kind of put more data into the new node. Can you explain yeah. a little bit how that actually works? Is that like automatic or do I as a user have to you know, do some manual configuration? That's the first question. And second question, I'm just wondering who's actually using TidyB since you're saying this has been uh, you know, built like five years ago, our company is using it and stuff like that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, basically, the yeah, uh, you have noticed that the, uh, it is star rebalancing. Um, like I said, the um, the region uh, is the minimal data movement unit, and the, right now, uh, the PD noticed that the, the new store doesn't have much data. And they start to you know, create a new replica in, in the new store, uh, uh, new replica of, of this region to the to the to, to the new store, and uh, try to remove the, the old replica inside the original nodes. And all this procedure is totally transparent to the application layer because the uh, the application layer only care about hey, uh, I'm just using the MySQL wire protocol and the, and the, under this, the type we will handle all this automatically. Uh, you don't have to worry about. Um, and this is uh, something like we call uh, dynamic sharding. It is not the static sharding solution. So uh, yeah, you are right. All the all the uh, process is transparent to the to the application layer. And um, another another thing you 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 mentioned is. Uh, uh, who, who is using TidyB in production right now. Uh, basically, um, TidyB is really, is very popular project. And I think uh, we have more than 300 in production uses uh, around the world. Most of them right now are in China. And even some, you know, we have some adapters like uh, Bank of Beijing. They also put the uh, core banking system uh, using TidyB. So I think it is battle tested. Um, yeah, uh, and most of our users are using TiDB as the uh, MySQL replacement, MySQL sharding replacement uh, to tackle the, the MySQL scalability problem. Yes. Okay, we have one okay. final question before we wrap up. And that question is, what is the performance between MySQL and TiDB? if run one a single host? Yeah, um, good question. Um, TiDB is not designed for the uh, small data set. So if you only have one single host, I will suggest you to use MySQL because the TiDB uh, is about 50 or 60% uh, for read performance compared to MySQL. And uh, and on the other hand, but you know, the whole point of, of TiDB cluster is it can be scaled out. So the throughput can be elastic scaling. Uh, for, but for the single node, I think uh, uh, is uh, I think it's slower than 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 than, than MySQL. And we also have a benchmark result here. Uh, I will show you really quickly. Uh, this is some, uh, is it, you know, the sysbench is a uh, uh, typical uh, benchmark of, of, uh, of MySQL in MySQL world. So we are benchmarking, uh, benchmarking TiDB and uh, with three, uh, 
with three nodes, uh, PDB, and we post our result here. We'll post our result here, uh, and you can uh, check it out. And uh, we also provide some benchmark about compared to the uh, compared to 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 MySQL. Uh, for the uh, this is a uh, three nodes uh, TiDB, uh, three nodes TiDB, and uh, this is uh, two I think two MySQL master and slave master slave so it's two two nodes. Uh, this is bench result, but the select performance uh, MySQL is better than than, than TiDB. Uh, but it's a very old uh, benchmark result. Yeah, right now TiDB will 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 be more faster than that time. So we can check check out here. Okay. Um, yeah. So we do have one more question. If you can answer it before we wrap yeah. up, and that is. Um, as Thai KV is a row based, does it mean that it is not optimized for multi segmentation query? Oh, it is a great, great question. Uh, basically, uh, in theory, uh, in, uh, in general, uh, this, uh, the answer is uh, yes, uh, it is not optimized for the multi segment column query, but in some uh, some case, if your uh, if your join in, include uh, includes uh, index query like uh, your in, like join on the primary key. Uh, for example, your primary key is a uh, number or something. Uh, we do some you know optimizations uh, for the joins or the table scan uh, uh, on specific type of of call it like primary row, like index. So if you don't have any uh, index on the column, uh, uh, that means uh, you have to read all the all the all the all the row data and extract the the specific row uh, specific column, and so it, it will bring some read and amplification. Uh, but so uh, I, I suggest that uh, you always do the join, do the lookup uh, through the uh, using the index, secondary index. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is all also the same with the the MySQL uh, standalone MySQL. Uh, it's pretty much the same. Yeah. Okay. And uh, by the way, uh, we also uh, provide the colon-based uh, colon-based uh, colon-based uh, database we call Tie Flash. Uh, consider it is the sidecar to the to the TiDB cluster, and it is colon-based and synchronize the data through Raft, and uh, we will redirect the OLAP query to the Tie Flash. Uh, Deployment and uh, in, in 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 this the data scan in this architecture in this uh, uh, in this database uh, high flash it is is calling database so the scan is super fast yeah okay. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for, for joining us for our first episode. Thank we you. will be doing a episode two um, in two weeks, and we will be sending that out to all of you guys. Hopefully, you can yeah. attend as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I have uh, one last uh, thing to talk about. Uh, the next web uh, web webinar episode, I want to talk about the deployment on AWS uh, and running some benchmark. Uh, so you can see the uh, what's the in production deployment looks like and what's the performance and for for your information. Okay. Great, and we'll be sending that out to everyone um, yeah. shortly. Yeah. Bye bye. All right. Thank you. Have a, a great day, everyone. Yeah.